Nation and YouTubers, there's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and uh, just having an all around good weekend this weekend, I hope. Thank you if you're a returning subscriber. Thank you if you're a new subscriber. I wish you all welcome. It is a gloomy Saturday for me. Uh, going to work, find out my partner's not going to be with me tonight, so I'm going to have to wait on another guy to come in later tonight. So it's going to be some work for me today. But in the meantime, in between time, I haven't jumped into the giant hate week like I've wanted to. But what's the hate? We are the number one team should be in the, all of the NFC. But, you know, everybody want to talk about Arizona and, you know, the Rams and everything. You know, they got their points, you know. I got you. Y'all look good. We got it. But wait till we see y'all. In Arizona, we will see y'all. So that Kyler Murray talk he had before the season, keep it up. But anyway, next up, the New York stinking Giants. Do they have what it takes to take down the juggernaut that is the Dallas Cowboys? There's a lot of history in between us. There's the coaches, the players, what happened last year in our house, and the fact that it's been approximately one year since that. Uh, you knew the NFL had to schedule that game. You knew it. Uh, but let's go through it. You got Dak Prescott, obviously coming back from his ankle injury at the scene of the crime. He will be looking for revenge. Uh, I wouldn't call it revenge on his part. He's more uh, redemption. It's the final part to his uh, comeback. He'll feel in the heart of hearts that it's over. It's fully over. He's fully back. And nothing's going to take this moment away from him tomorrow. And he's hoping to put a shellacking on the Giants for good measure. Because we still went on to win that game uh, thanks to Zeke Elliott and Andy Dalton in the end. Uh, it was a great emotional win, but it was kind of fruitless in the end. It didn't really help us, you know, win the East or do anything, but it looked good on paper, and it was an emotional thing at the time. Running backs, you got the two-headed monster. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. Aside from Tampa Bay, there's not really that many teams out there can that can probably stop this rushing attack. Uh, and even if you tried to stop one, you got the other. And, you know, they got so many ways now that they're implementing uh, the guys onto the field uh, where you even you're not even using a traditional fullback. You're using an extra offensive lineman. So that tells you about the personnel groupings we have out there where you can still run like 12 personnel or, or 21 personnel and you could keep it in that personnel, but they got so many looks in just that one grouping, you know? And that is awesome. I, I like that since Kellamore has taken over, he's uh, taken Jason Garrett's mantras and flipped it on their head. Uh, he's made it his own. And he's brought some of that uh, college boy, I could draw up a play in the field and uh, run it type of mentality, you know? Uh, he's giving Dak more rain. Uh, he's calling audibles at the line. He's doing exactly what a franchise quarterback should be doing. I'm loving every bit of it. Uh, wide receivers. Uh, Mari Cooper has a hamstring issue. And he said it himself, if he can run, he's gonna play. So. Good luck stopping that guy. If he's out here scoring touchdown when he's hurt, imagine what he's like when he's 100%. Uh, C.D. Lamb, of course. He's always going to be a beast. You never know what's going to happen with him. Uh, Cedric Wilson is making his name known. Noah Brown is still around. Uh, Sammy Fajoko is out there. Malik Turner. And this is all before we even see Michael Gallup come back. So <laughs> how, the team just gets better. The tight ends, you never know if it's going to be the Blake Jarwin show or the Dalton Schultz show, you know, because both of those guys can either help run block 
or catch passes out the backfield or do whatever they need to do to help this team win. That offense is stout. The offensive line has been the best it's looked since probably 2016. Uh, there's no real big major problems in it. Uh, Tyler Biotis is just going to have to get a little stronger so he can hold up, uh, anchor up that middle. Uh, Connor Williams has some moments where he's caught flat-footed. But other than that, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and surprisingly, Terrence Steele are all doing what they got to do. It's an amazing thing when you don't even have to say their names because aside from rare holding calls, they're not really giving up quarterback sacks this year. Not like last year, when they were horrible. So, all love to the offense. Defense, Dan Quinn, who a lot of people said was shit. We didn't want him. He was horrible. Look at the crap he did in Atlanta. We tried to tell you, Dan Quinn in Atlanta was the head coach. That's why it looked bad. He was not the defensive coordinator. You got to remember the head coaches have a lot more responsibility than just being a coordinator. And you're seeing the results. He's modeling this thing into his own mold. He's turned it around from the worst defense in Cowboys history last year to having the defense that is damn near top 10, top five, and turnover machines, most takeaways uh, uh, in the NFL this year. And it's just a breath of fresh air with new talent from the draft, a couple of free agents, and the fact that when some guys are not there due to uh, COVID or injury, we got enough depth to really handle it this time. That's not been a, a thing we could say in the past couple of years. And, you know, you can owe it to Dan. You can own it to Mike. But let's be honest. In the end, uh, no matter what we say, it's going to come down to the Joneses. And that's where we're not giving our credits is to Mike McCarthy and the Joneses because we know Will McClay, uh, he's usually been the de facto GM between him and Stephen Jones uh, making decisions. And all the stuff we uh, feel like, like this could be a trap game for us, that was Jason Garrett era talk. That's where we got stuck and lulled into those false senses of hope where we're like, man, we put up this big signature win and then we're going to flop the next week. I don't feel that with this team. I don't see that coming. Um, there's been talk of the issues with uh, the coaches, schemings, or clock management, or game management, or anything like that, eventually going to cost us some games. But if we're already blowing out teams, then it's not even going to matter. <laughs> you know, I like it when we don't have referees or coaching decisions be the reason for us winning or losing. I love that. It's been a long time since we could actually come out and say that the only reason we lost is because we straight up lost because of something on the field, not because of any outside interference, you know? It just feels good to finally say that after so long. Uh, but yeah, I have us winning the game. Uh, it might be handedly. I didn't think the Carolina win was going to be as easily handled as it was. But uh, I think this one probably can get out of hand. Uh, they're not going to have uh, Shepard and uh, Peppers and uh, God, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Slayton. All right. So they're not going to have two primary wide receivers and uh, their safety. <laughs> Y'all were already coming in outnumbered, and then you're missing players. Uh, you're going to have to put it all on Daniel Jones and Shaquan Barkley to save your butts. Uh, and I don't think that's going to be enough horses in the race to compete with us. But we'll have to see. I mean, all the talking heads, really, but uh, <laughs> are talking up the Giants like they have a shot. Let's, let's give them credit where credit's due. You know, they got to do what they got to do to get clickbait. Uh, so they're going to say the Giants have a real legit shot just so when they, if the Cowboys lose, they can say, ha, I told you so. But uh, I don't think Giants are going to pull it off. 
I don't see it happening. It, if it is, it's going to be by some miracle. Uh, but yeah, I think the Cowboys are going to win this one handedly. Uh, it's probably going to be something like 36 14. 36 17. Uh, Trayvon Diggs. I don't think is going to get any more interception. Well, I don't think he'll get an interception this game because teams are going to have to start strategizing against throwing his way. They're going to have to start abusing AB because if you throw out digs, eventually he's going to get you. And that's something you don't want happening. So we'll have to see. Um, I'm fascinated to see where Michael Parsons is going to line up mostly at. Uh, more than likely, he's going to be at linebacker. Uh, but with Neil coming back, they'll probably have him all over the field. Uh, and the fact he can handle all that is a great thing. So that's what I'm thinking. 30, 36, 37 to 14 or 17, something like that. Uh, Cowboys win. And that's my prediction. Uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the game. Uh, stay safe. Take care out there. So the fam that came in to say hi today. Love you. All right. This is VA Dallas Cowboy fan.